Hey everybody, thanks for coming out and checking another crafting and doodling with me. Today, we're gonna carve a pumpkin because it's Halloween and everyone likes to make jack-o'-lanterns. And this month we're gonna have a jack-o'-lantern stencil take home activity kit for you. So I'm gonna draw some stencils that you can use to make some unique jack-o'-lanterns. We're gonna make this owl design that I did today and this will be in the kit. So if you like this, and you like following along, you can uh, do it at home, but we'll have a couple more options for you too. Um, so let's get started. Okay, actually, we can't get started yet because we have to do a little prep work first. Now, when you're carving a jack-o'-lantern, prep work is, you know, probably like 50, you know, 20 to 50% of the job. So you don't want to skimp on your prep work so I did most of that off camera so to save time so you guys wouldn't have to watch me scoop pumpkin guts. But we'll just go over those tips real quick. So before you get started with the carving part, the next part we're going to show, um, you make sure you, you do these parts right. So when you're carving a pumpkin, the first thing you want to make note of is that you want to make sure you're carving on the, the clean side of the pumpkin. So notice this pumpkin has a bunch of calluses on this side. It's because pumpkins grow <laughs> like this, like they're laying on their side when they grow. So this is the side that was laying on the ground when it grew. So we're not going to use that side. We're going to put our, our carving on this nice clean side. So prepare that, kind of like, you know, make sure you're on the right side. Then you want to get your pumpkin tools. Now, you really only need like a little bitty saw like this. A saw is better than a knife. And if you only have a knife, then a serrated knife will work best because you really want to kind of cut that pumpkin up. So what you want to do is you want to carve this top part. See how I've got this nice little circle carved out for our lid here? But when you do that, you want to make sure that your knife is at like a 45 degree angle when you're cutting. So you want to make go into the pumpkin like this instead of like this, like straight down. Because if you carve straight down, then your pumpkin is just, the lid is just going to fall into the inside of your pumpkin. So when you carve at an angle like that, at a 45 degree angle, it makes like a little lip for your pumpkin to sit on, your, uh, your lid to sit on. So now it just kind of comes off and off like a, like a top. The next thing you want to do is you want to take your lid and you want to carve a little hole in the top of that lid. See how I've got a, ho a hole carved there? That's for the smoke from your candle that you're going to put inside your jack-o'-lantern. So once you put your candle inside your jack-o'-lantern, it's really gonna, it's gonna shrivel up really quick because remember, this is just a piece of fruit. So when you put a fire in there, you're starting to cook it from the inside. So a jack-o'-lantern's lifespan isn't very long once you start doing that. But if you put a little hole in the top here, that's gonna um, let a place, that's gonna make a little place for the smoke to come out of. It's also gonna bring air into your pumpkin to just make a little nicer circulation um, for that fire in there. So that's another important fact and you'll notice that I have my hole drilled sort of like behind the, uh, the stem of the pumpkin. So you can't really see the hole when you're looking at it from the front. When you look at the back you can see the smoke hole there. So that's just to hide the hole so our jack-o'-lantern uh, Carving is, you know, front and center and uh, the only thing that we can concentrate on. So it's going to make your design look a lot nicer. So now that we've got those prep steps out of the way, the next important step is to empty out the inside of your pumpkin. See, notice how nice and smooth it is on the inside of my pumpkin. It doesn't look like that when you first cut it open. You're going to see a bunch of stringy pumpkin guts and seeds in here. So you're going to want to take uh, a scoop or something and sort of just scoop out all that 
membrane and seeds. And then, see how everything's kind of nice and smooth on the inside? That's when you use your little, little pumpkin scoop. Because I find that these things aren't really great for actually digging out the stuff. It's much better for making this smooth kind of surface. So once you're, you know, once you've got all that gook out, you can come back with this thing and can you hear that? Just really like kind of scrape it until it's nice and smooth inside. Because you don't want all that stuff to get in the way of your jack-o-lantern carving. And I think the smoother and nicer the pumpkin is, pumpkin is on the inside, it'll make for better carving on the outside. Now, make sure you don't throw away those pumpkin seeds because they make a really good snack. You can just cover them with some salt and pepper and oil and roast them in the oven. Mmm. Yeah, that's real good. They make a nice, crunchy, healthy, seasonal snack. So don't throw those seeds away. I'll be mad at you, because I would have eaten them. So you get a snack and a jack-o'-lantern with this craft. Okay, now let's get ready to carve our image here on our pumpkin. Now, it can be a little tricky, because um, we're dealing with, we're putting a 2D sort of design onto this rounded 3D shape. So it might be a little difficult to sort of get that paper on there good. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the paper and just sort of cut the edges. Just put little, you know, shallow little lines into the, into the paper. And what that's going to do is it's going to let your paper wrap around the pumpkin a little easier. So when we tape it on there, it's going to uh, it's going to stay. It's going to kind of conform to the shape of the pumpkin a little bit better. So you can see I can move that sort of the design a little better and keep it flat there. So I'm going to tape this down, and then we can get started carving. Okay, now that I've got this design taped onto the front of our pumpkin, what we're going to do next is we're going to kind of make a tracing onto the top of the pumpkin. So we're not going to carve our shapes directly out in this stage. We're going to kind of leave an impression. We're going to poke little holes around each part of the uh, design here. The black parts of the design are what we're going to be cutting out. And that is going to make it easier for us when we go to carve. So we can just doot, 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 and push them out. So there's a couple ways to do this. And the little kit that I bought has a couple things. There's this little hole poker that we can use. Maybe if there's a couple edges that we can't really get around. You can also use your knife to just kind of like dent, 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 stab little holes. Um, but the kit that I got has this like little kind of rolly saw thing. So we're going to use that to poke our holes with, because I think that'll probably be the, the fastest way. But if you don't have something like this at home, you can easily use your, your, uh, your knife to poke holes. Um, and I'll show you how to do that too. But let's test this first. Let's see how this goes. So I'm just going to push it in there and just roll across. Yeah, see, it, it, it does a good straight line, but it doesn't really, it's not going to let me get these fine corners. So I'm going to poke holes at these tight lines. Oh, guess what? I'm doing this incorrectly. I forgot the most important part. We have to start with the center of the pumpkin. So we're going to work outwards from the owl's beak because you want to carve in the center of the pumpkin first. Can you think about why you might have to do that maybe? It's because 
you want to think about it as like a bullseye. If we start from the outside and go in, we're weakening the surface of the pumpkin. So this inner part is going to be more fragile and it might just collapse on us. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out instead of in so we can avoid that. So let's start over. Let's I'm just going to go like this. And you can see how I'm just kind of poking little holes. So I'm going to do this for the, uh, for the whole design. And let's fast forward to see what it looks like when I'm done. Now you can see our outline, all the holes I poked in the pumpkin. So this is going to be a lot easier to carve out with our saw. Okay. So remember, we want to start with the middle and work outward because it's not an issue yet with just this little outline but if we start down here and work inward our pumpkin might collapse and then we have to start all over and you don't want to do that since you made all this made it this far so let's start with the beak oh you know what another thing i forgot but that's good so that you guys can remember is you want to have a little trash can nearby for your while you're carving so you can throw away your pumpkin pieces and now I'm back with the trash can the trash can is going to be down here next to me so for easy access All right, from there, let's do our little oh, backwards. This is our owl's eye. Looks like I missed some of the, there we go, some of my outline. So let's go back, get that. See, this is where you can really make, you want to be really careful because if you make a mistake, it's hard to, hard to fix. And you can already see this. Part of the pumpkin is kind of like bending as I saw. So we want to make sure we don't mess up. We gotta be real careful. Okay, let's take start from there now. This part's going to be really tricky. This eyeball is going to be, don't want it to collapse. Let's be real careful with our cuts. Be gentle. Because we want to keep that middle part without it breaking off. Let's be real gentle there. Success. Oh. Ah, geez. <laughs> Look what I did. I broke it. But it looks okay still, huh? We lost our center part. Maybe this isn't the best 
design. <laughs> I made this design myself, and I've never really carved too many jack-o'-lanterns, so as you can tell, <laughs> I'm an amateur. So let's just try to salvage this, make it look like a, just like a little pupil here, so he can still have his pupil. Okay. Guess I made those parts a little too skinny. Should have made them wider. All right, there we go. So now we've got our beak and our eyes. Now let's uh, let's do this part up top, and then we'll go down and do his little feathers down here. I'm going to maybe make it a little bigger than it's supposed to be because we don't want it to, we don't want to lose our little edges again. see our whole pumpkin starting to move. All right. There we go. Now I got the owl's brow carved out. Let's do his, let's move down to his little, little feather pelt. Now, when I was a little younger, I was a younger man, one of my friends always used to have a jack-o'-lantern carving party at her house every Halloween. And I don't think I ever attended that event. <laughs> and it's really showing today, because I don't have the skills to make my jack-o'-lantern as pretty as I want it to be. But that's okay, it's gonna be my best effort. And knowing that I did my best, it's good enough for me. So if you mess up on your jack-o'-lantern, don't get discouraged, because that's just a jack-o'-lantern after all, and you can always try again next year. Or maybe you could go get another one and try again. The only way to get good at something is to practice, practice it a lot. So you may not be a good pumpkin carver for your, in your first attempt, but don't let it make you upset. Just, uh, you know, take that experience and learn for next time. So next time you'll have a better a better experience, I'm certain, because you'll have learned from your past mistakes. Oh, oh I messed that one up. <laughs> Let's get it out of there.
And you can see there's kind of little bits. This is like another part, all those little stray bits, kind of stringy parts. You can just like use your knife to scrape those off, get them out of there. All right, we've got one more row. Whoops. You know, making these they're just kind of like little arrows, but the design makes it look like an owl when you put those arrows sort of in this pattern. Doesn't it look like an owl's face? have it. There is our owl jack lantern ready for Halloween. All right, y'all. Here we have our finished jack o' lantern. I messed up the eyes a little bit. It didn't really go the way I planned, but still looks pretty good, huh? Looks like an owl, right? So you can see I did clean up a little bit of our stringy stuff in there too, so we can get a nice clear picture of that owl design. So send us a picture of your jack-o'-lantern if you guys carve some with our stencil kits. I'd love to see y'all's jack-o'-lanterns. And remember, if you mess up, it's okay. You're going to get better for next time you try. Can And, you know, carving pumpkins is tricky. It's not the, uh, <clears throat> not the most forgiving medium. <laughs> it's not like drawing on a piece of paper. So our activity kits our stencil kits are going to be available in the children's room tomorrow on Friday. So if you'd like to pick one up, they'll be down there available for you. If you want to reserve one, you can email me. Um, you can find my email address on the library website, and I'll be sure to set one aside for you. But I'm going to try and make enough to make sure that everyone has a chance to get one. And if you go down there and it's empty or something, you can email me and I'll, I'll make one for you as well. So, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy trick-or-treating, and I hope you make some cool pumpkins. <laughs>